welcome to Shift Watch. I'm your host, Starbuck. In this episode, we begin with a terrific explanation of the sun cycles so we can understand more about the impact solar weather conditions have on our planet. Next, 6.8 earthquakes in Cuba? Yes, and not just one. Here's the Earthmaster with an update. Then, comprehending the energetic calibration changes we are experiencing at the planet level and as human beings from DNA awakening. And finally, here's a clip from the latest interview on the Ethereal Edge podcast with evidence in the form of images from my light being experiences as promised. Sun has long been a significant source of energy for us, especially in recent times, and it is about to undergo a pivotal and transformative change, the reversal of its magnetic poles. This event typically occurs at regular intervals, marking the halfway point in the solar cycle, and it has profound effects on Earth. It might surprise you to learn that the sun could rapidly become a serious hazard capable of completely disrupting life on our planet. As you'll discover, the sun's magnetic field is generated by the motion of electrically charged gases in its core, a process called the solar dynamo. Over time, this magnetic field grows more intricate and distorted due to the sun's evolving conditions and convective movements. Ultimately, this leads to a full reversal of its magnetic poles. The north pole becomes the south pole and vice versa. But let's take a moment to break down the entire cycle and better understand the sun. The sun is mostly composed of hydrogen and helium in the form of plasma, a state of matter where electrons are no longer bound to atoms, creating a mix of free electrons and ions. The sun's interior is divided into multiple layers, with the core at the center surrounded by the radiative zone and the convective zone. The core is where nuclear fusion takes place, converting hydrogen into helium and releasing immense amounts of energy. The radiative zone lies above the core, where energy is transferred outward through radiation. In this region, energy moves outward slowly as photons are absorbed and re-emitted by the sun's plasma. The convective zone, which is the outermost layer, is where energy is transported by convection. Hot plasma rises toward the surface, cools, and sinks again, creating currents within the sun. The solar dynamo operates primarily within the convective zone and the T-line, a thin layer between the radiative and convective zones. The T-line is crucial because it's where the sun's differential rotation and shear flows play a major role in generating the magnetic field. Here's an interesting tidbit you might not have heard. The sun doesn't rotate as a solid body. Instead, different parts of the sun rotate at varying speeds, with the equator spinning faster than the poles. This is known as differential rotation. This variation stretches and twists the sun's magnetic field lines elongating them. The solar cycle is an approximate 11-year rhythm during which the sun's magnetic field undergoes a sequence of changes, culminating in a flip of the poles. This cycle is powered by the solar dynamo and includes several phases. At the start of the solar cycle, the sun enters a phase known as solar minimum, characterized by few sunspots and low solar activity. The magnetic field is relatively simple and consists of a clear north and south pole. As the cycle continues, sunspot activity intensifies. Sunspots are regions of intense magnetic activity, and they arise as magnetic fields from the sun's interior rise to the surface. These sunspots appear in pairs with opposite magnetic polarities and gradually move toward the sun's equator. Around the midpoint of the solar cycle, the sun reaches solar maximum, a time of peak activity marked by the highest number of sunspots solar flares, and coronal mass ejections, CMEs. The magnetic field becomes extremely complex and entangled due to constant twisting and shearing from differential rotation and convection. As the solar maximum subsides, the magnetic field starts to reconfigure itself. The twisted field lines reconnect, and the sun's global magnetic field gradually reverses its polarity, with the north magnetic pole becoming the south pole and vice versa. This transition is facilitated by the shifting and restructuring of solar plasma movements. After the magnetic reversal, the sun enters a period of decreasing activity, returning to solar minimum. 
Eventually, the magnetic field reorganizes, and the cycle starts over again. Currently, we are at the solar maximum phase, and the sun's magnetic field is on the verge of flipping. During this time, we can expect significant solar activity, which, while fascinating, could also pose serious risks. However, the sun's magnetic field reversal is not a sudden event, but rather part of a continuous cycle. As the solar cycle progresses, the sun's magnetic field undergoes various transformations. Right now, the magnetic field is at its most tangled and complex. It reaches a critical point and begins to reorganize, resulting in a pole reversal. So, how do we know when the sun's magnetic field will flip? Scientists monitor the sun's magnetic activity with a variety of instruments and methods. Observatories equipped with advanced telescopes, both on Earth and in space, provide detailed images of the sun's surface and sunspot activity. Instruments like the Solar and Heliospheric Observatory and the Solar Dynamics Observatory track the sun's magnetic field and its changes over time. One key indicator of an impending magnetic reversal is the behavior of sunspots. During solar maximum, sunspots increase in frequency and become more prominent as they move closer to the sun's equator, signaling that the magnetic field is becoming unstable and preparing to flip. Uh, just looking at some seismograph stations here of that large earthquake that just struck a few minutes ago, a short time ago here in the Cuba area, producing a significant seismic wave there from a 6.8 earthquake, 14 miles deep here into the Cuba region along the plate boundary here around, uh, looks like the eastern edge here of the Cayman Ridge actually a pretty significant earthquake there. I was looking at the Tsunami Warning Center. I don't see anything showing up here on the Tsunami page, but it looks like it may be offline. Well, it's working right now. No Tsunami Warning Advisory Watch or threat from this earthquake, but it's actually a pretty decent sized quake there across the area, and I'm sure uh, quite a few folks felt it here across the area to the east. Uh, let's see if we got any reports coming in from this earthquake. Uh, very minimal at best here, but maybe not a whole lot of people just in the mood to report it. It does look like maybe even a few folks there in Miami, Florida, uh, reported feeling that earthquake. I don't know. It's possible. Uh, at 739 kilometers away, that's, that's a uh, considerable distance there. But, uh, uh, yeah. So anyway, it has been uh, noted here in the last couple days, and I've talked about this in a couple different videos of mine, that uh, the Caribbean plate here, which where this earthquake struck recently, is uh, underneath a lot of strain here. We've seen a lot of movement here across the area of the Middle America Trench southward. Let me show you guys the last seven days of uh, earthquake activity. Uh, a swarm of movement here into the Middle America Trench, some larger scale activity off the coast of Panama. This area right here is a subduction zone, and what happens here ultimately affects areas around the Caribbean Plate. This movement here furthered a swarm of activity here around the Puerto Rico Trench recently, and it looks like that activity has come to a breaking point here across the area of Cuba. Uh, this is just the way plate tectonics work. Uh, let me show you guys a map here real quick. The Caribbean plate in the pink salmon color. Here's the Middle America Trench where the red arrows are pointing. Cuba uh, over here along the northern edge of the Caribbean plate. So intensifying earthquake activity, adding strain all across this little plate called the Caribbean plate. It gets squeezed. It gets pushed around um, by the South American plate here to the south and you know it's it's a little vulnerable plate that's subject to some large earthquake activity uh so it's just a matter of time before we've seen some things uh further escalate there across the area due to all the elevated movement here across the middle america trench recently uh, 6.8 it looks like there was a 5.9 here as well about an hour uh prior to that 6.8 so that's going to be a foreshock I sense significant changes on the horizon and would like to share what is happening with you. 
Looking ahead to 2025 to 2027, I believe we are approaching what appears to be humanity's most significant planetary recalibration. This period, I believe, will be characterized by unprecedented vibrational elevations, quantum leaps in consciousness, and profound spiritual awakenings that will have a significant impact on those who are currently ascending. Through my observation of your path, I can tell you that establishing clear, unwavering boundaries serves as the sacred act of shedding past versions of yourself, much like a butterfly emerging from its chrysalis. This ascension process you're experiencing, while intricate and multifaceted, is your natural progression toward living as an empowered, authentic being in full alignment with universal consciousness. I'm witnessing the remarkable development of collective telepathy among ascending individuals like yourself which grants you the divine ability to consciously choose what energies enter your vibrational field. This heightened discernment allows you to reconnect with your sovereign nature through expanded conscious awareness. As you master your multidimensional aspects, you're actively clearing dense energetic residue, maintaining your center point of power, and systematically eliminating lower consciousness grids that no longer align with your true self and soul purpose. Your role as an ascending starseed soul is particularly significant. You're an integral part of a cosmic light ascension team directly supporting Gaia's transition into her higher conscious state. The profound purpose you carry involves the intricate process of building your physical light body and elevating the vibrational frequency of matter itself. This metaphysical function, which we recognize as ascension and evolution, enables you to fully embody your higher self while navigating the rich tapestry of human experience. As your consciousness expands, I observe you drawing in increasingly refined crystalline energy from your higher self and soul essence into your physical form. This alchemical process of consciousness transformation, divine alchemy, holds the potential to completely redefine the known dimensions of awareness and being. You're currently experiencing a major upgrade and life transition and I want you to know that it's perfectly natural to recognize when certain situations, relationships, or environments have fulfilled their purpose in your journey. This awareness allows you to move forward gracefully, following the magnetic pull of your soul's calling. You, along with other ascending beings on our transforming planet, hold the powerful vision of new earth reality. Your collective is driven by the profound desire to manifest heaven on earth, bringing this vision into being through conscious, natural, and synchronistic means. As an advanced New Earth human, the transformation you're undergoing involves the restoration of your genetic coding to its original divine template. You've successfully transitioned from an old Earth human paradigm to embrace your higher purpose in the New Earth reality. During this internal shift, I understand that your old mental constructs may occasionally project fear about the unknown that lies ahead. However, remember that your higher self, in collaboration with light team beings, is continuously working to transcend outdated consciousness programs, clear past generational timeline imprints, and release internal patterns that no longer serve your highest evolution. According to my understanding, you will experience this transformation on both an internal and external level. Your inner landscape will reflect the collective changes occurring in our world. I understand how intense these changes can be, but believe me when I say they are necessary catalysts for growth. You may notice disruptions in various aspects of your life, such as relationships changing, career paths shifting, and belief systems transforming, all of which serve as necessary stepping stones to higher consciousness. I sense a divine orchestration at work, a cosmic intelligence far beyond our comprehension, guiding this massive realignment. This power, as I understand it, is methodically reorganizing our collective and individual energetic frequencies to align with the Earth's evolving consciousness. You are being prepared, along with the rest of humanity, to integrate with our planet's ascending vibrational blueprint. During this time, you will experience incredible synchronicities, revelations, and connections. I see this as more than just a change. It's a complete dimensional shift in how you'll perceive reality. While these energetic shifts may feel difficult at first, I assure you that they are bringing you closer to your full potential and our shared destiny. I want you to understand that the universe operates through an intricate system of evolutionary support, systematically guiding you, the ascending soul, through carefully orchestrated internal dismantling processes.
These breakdowns, while appearing chaotic and distressing in their immediate experience, are meticulously designed catalysts for your conscious expansion and spiritual maturation. When you encounter these moments of profound unraveling, recognize them as the universe's sophisticated mechanism for initiating quantum leaps in your consciousness. Every tire shed, every moment of confusion, and every instance of emotional turbulence serves as a precise calibration tool, adjusting your energetic frequency to align with higher dimensional awareness. The dissolution of outdated paradigms, while temporarily destabilizing, creates essential space for the integration of more evolved states of being. Your current reality matrix, operating predominantly in third-dimensional consciousness, functions as an elaborate learning environment. Through my extensive analysis of consciousness evolution patterns, I observe that you are systematically rewiring neural pathways and dismantling conditioned response mechanisms that have previously limited your perception of what's possible. This process, though clinically precise in its execution, requires your emotional intelligence to develop exponentially as you navigate increasingly subtle energetic frequencies. Beyond the thinning dimensional veil lies an absolute truth, a force so pure and potent that it serves as the ultimate catalyst for planetary liberation. This truth, which you are now equipped to seek and integrate, often manifests as a challenging catalyst for transformation. As your consciousness expands, you'll find that this truth acts as both a solvent, dissolving illusions, and a crystalline foundation upon which you can construct your authentic existence. The emergence of your true self through this process isn't merely a personal achievement. It represents a crucial contribution to the collective evolution of human consciousness. It's enveloping you. Holy cow. That's exactly mm -hmm. right. You know, the longer we were there, the more you could begin to sense what was taking place. It felt cool. You would think that that would be hot. No, no, no. It feels cool. Right. Yes. Could you feel the vibration from it? Like, was there a sensation associated with that? Yeah, but you know, you're so disoriented because you really don't have any frame of reference for what you think you should or shouldn't be feeling. And I won't really understand what this is feeling for another like 10 days because when this day is over we're going to conclude i still don't know much about her but i do know that in 10 days i'll be in shasta to present and she's also planning on taking some people to shasta the week before so we decided that she's going to arrive on sunday I'll be there like Wednesday of the week before the conference and somewhere in there we'll have time to kind of get better acquainted. Well, that day came Thursday. We finally find uh, some time, common time <laughs> while we're there and let's scoot along in the pictures and I'll take okay. you to what's about to take place. Oh, this is the last image that she took and it just when you take um, dimensional images like that, it always looks like you're leaning. Right. It does look like that because the tree looks straight, but then all these other things, you even you guys look like you're kind of leaning. Isn't that funny? Yes. Mm -hmm. So and what do we have uh, here? When I finally see her on Thursday, <clears throat> uh, we uh, took our chairs and found a little campsite that was open up at Panther Meadows, if you know where that is in Shasta. And so for the next 45 minutes, she's going to tell me her story. That's how I found out about, you know, her hybrid beginnings and how all that panned out, what she's been doing since then. Um, and when uh, we got to this particular stage of the discussions, she had informed me that Sunday when she got here, she made a trip to inner earth and brought these back. Now, what you see in the middle of my hand, there were about five stones that size. And the one kind of closer to my finger, that was just a shard of one of these. But when I look closely at this, it looked like obsidian that had been like infused with green and blue Andara in it. Mm -hmm. And I was just fascinated mm -hmm. by it. I gave her the big one back and she said, you can keep the shard. She had a little plastic bag that they were in. So there was the shard and some dust from this stuff. She said I could keep it. Later in the week, when I get to Shasta <clears throat> and I spend a little time, there are a number of crystal shops, but there's one in particular, kind of one block off the main drag called um, 
the Crystal Matrix Gallery, and it's run by a guy named Maziba. <laughs> if you ever go in the shop and speak to There him doesn't for ever a while, seem to be anybody named like Bob. Like <laughs> everybody has Maziba very unique names. <laughs> is absolutely from somewhere else. And I was introduced to him by Mickey and some others. And so he's a little bit, you got to get used to him a little bit. But once he's dialed into your energy, he can tell you many things. And I thought if anybody could tell me anything about this stuff, it would be him. So I took the shard over to him. And when I explained where I got it from, he put it under a light on the counter and he said, oh, well, I don't know how this came through men, uh, inner earth, if that's where she said she got it. But this is from the heart nebula. And I went, you mean the heart nebula, the constellation in the sky? He goes, yeah, 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 that's where it came from. I don't know how it got to inner earth, but that's where it originated from. So wow. he kept the shard. So I, if I need to know where any more about it, the guy who knows more about it is the one that's in possession with it. But there's a final scene with the light beings that we're getting to. And it's going to be played out in the Shasta era while we're there. So all of what took place up to now was leading to something else.